Hi, and welcome to Infertility Unfiltered, where fertility warriors and experts are joining forces to provide you with facts, information, tips, and inspiration so that you can take back control of your life and get your baby on board. Hi, I'm Jennifer Robertson, and today we are joined by Stephanie Roth. Now, Stephanie is a certified fertility counsel, counselor and integrative nutrition health coach. I can't even speak today. <laughs> she <laughs> offers seasonal cleanse programs, online tools, custom meditations, and fertility coaching programs to help you thrive on your fertility journey. Stephanie is a yoga junkie, a wellness enthusiast, a marathon runner, and a 50-year-old first-time mum of six-year-old. You do not look like you're 50, by the way. She <laughs> fell pregnant. She fell pregnant a month before her 43rd birthday, despite being told her egg supply was undetectable. And today we are going to be talking about her top tips for conceiving over the age of 35. And if you stick around to the end, Stephanie is going to tell you how you can get your hands on a free copy of her ebook, 101 Ways to Boost Your Fertility Even When You're Over 35 and Have Been Told That There Is No Chance. I cannot wait to hear all about Steph's top tips. So Stephanie, welcome. Hey, Jennifer, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Now, before we get into your top tips, I would love to just know a little bit about you and what led you down this path. Yeah, so well, as you said, I turned 50 earlier this year um, and my son is six and a half, so you can do the math. Um, I conceived a month before my 43rd birthday. So I didn't, you know, I was kind of a late bloomer in so many areas of life, just kind of late to the game. I didn't get married until I was 38. Didn't start trying to have a baby until I was 42. So um, yeah, and I just kind of like a lot of people, I thought, you know, it would just take a few months and I'd be pregnant and that would be it, you know, even though I was older. And then I'd be on my merry way. And I learned after having um, an early miscarriage, um, a first trimester miscarriage, that maybe it wasn't going to be quite so easy as I thought it was going to be. Um, after kind of rebounding from my miscarriage, my husband and I went for fertility testing and, you know, everything came back great for him. And, you know, we quickly learned that the issue was with me. And I had that disastrous recipe of, um, you know, high FSH, low AMH. My AMH was um, put my egg supply category in the undetectable category. So high FSH, low AMH, low antrofollicle count. It was never higher than five. Um, and all of that led, you know, my doctor to predicting that I had less than a 2% chance of conceiving with my own eggs and recommended that I pursue donor egg IVF as my best chance of getting pregnant and having a baby. Um, I decided that I wasn't opposed to that, but I didn't want to just kind of start out with that right out of the gate in treatment. You know, I wanted to try, um, you know, less invasive procedures first. I knew that I was very healthy. You know, I was, I was taking good care of myself. I was in good shape. I was in really good health. So I wanted to try, you know, um, less invasive methods first. And I ended up conceiving um, using intrauterine insemination. Um, just six months after getting my diminished ovarian reserve diagnosis. And my son um, just finished kindergarten. He'll be in first grade this fall. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, so tell us, what did you do? And what, what should someone who is, you know, over the age of 35, because, you know, over the age of 30, you're considered, you know, really old in fertility years. So what, what, what are some of your top tips? What are some of the things that you did? Yeah, so I think the first thing to remember is, I mean, age is, I mean, I hate that kind of trite expression. Age is just a number, but it is a number. I mean, there's so many numbers, right, in this fertility journey. You know, how many embryos did you get? You know, AMH is a number. FSH is a number. How many follicles you have? They're all numbers. And age is just kind of one of those numbers. You know, this is kind of all a numbers game in the fertility game. And it's important to be mindful of age um, and knowing that, you know, time is 
um, something to be very mindful of, but it's not sort of the be all end all in conceiving. Um, you know, a lot of the, in a lot of the way it's presented in the media, it's like, you know, your fertility just like falls off a cliff when you turn 35. And that's, you know, not necessarily true. I mean, yes, women's, a woman's fertility does decline as she ages. But it's not like, you know, you're super fertile when you're 34 and 364 days, and then all of a sudden the next day, you know, you're not fertile anymore. So while it's something to be very mindful of, it's not the be all end all on this journey. And I think that's something that's really important to remember. Absolutely, because we feel like it's this biological clock and we can actually feel it ticking. And I think that's the pressure of time is what can lead us to do back-to-back -back cycles, so cycle after cycle, because we're like, I just don't want to waste a month because we have this concept that one extra month means, you know, our eggs are, are one month older, and we really do put a lot of emphasis on that. We do, and it, and it is true. I mean, we are very conscious of the passage of time. We're very aware of the fact that, you know, time is, is a finite commodity. Um, but actually, I'm a big proponent of, you know, taking breaks in fertility treatment. My son was actually conceived after a three-month break from the fertility clinic. So it began as a break that was imposed upon me. I had a, a cycle canceled. And it just kind of ended up being a few months away just due to kind of scheduling and travel and, you know, all that kind of logistical kind of stuff. I mean, it wasn't planned that I was going to be away from the clinic for three months. It just kind of ended up that way. But it ended up being a real blessing in disguise because I used that time, you know, I used those three months to really, um, you know, kind of take stock of where I was in my journey. And it was a real turning point for me. And I, I, that was when I really started, um, you know, kind of thinking about my journey in a different way. And we can kind of talk more about that as we go on. Absolutely. So what are some things that they can do that can actually increase their chances? So um, first I would recommend um, get, if you're not already, get laser focused on your cycles. Um, this is important whether you are trying to conceive naturally or or if you're in treatment. It can be equally beneficial if you're in treatment where your cycles are being monitored for you. Um, when I first started down my journey, I had, I mean, I'm kind of embarrassed to say it now as a 50 year old woman, but when I was 42, trying to have a baby for the first time, I had no clue, zero clue about my cycles. I knew how long they were. Um, I knew that I was getting my period regularly. Um, but that was about it. I had no clue what was going on in my body between one period to the next. And, and um, we don't. I was exactly no. the same. I was on the pill for 16 years up until then. And so I had a little pill packet that would tell me when mm -hmm. my period would come. And I would actually sometimes just not, not take the break and just keep on going. So I didn't even get a period. Like I just didn't know my cycle. And that's such a big thing. It is. And, you know, and it's kind of embarrassing to say now, but I didn't even know that there were only certain days of the month that you could get pregnant. I mean, when I was growing up, we were taught that, you know, you could get pregnant anytime you had sex. I mean, I'm sure that was to dissuade young girls from having sex, right? And that's kind of a whole other story. But, but that's what, you know, kind of women from my generation, we were told, and hopefully that's changing for young women now, you know, hopefully they're learning the truth. Um, but I was just, kind of amazed when I found out, you know, that we really only have that window of, you know, five days or so every month when conception can happen. So imagine what an eye opener that was for me. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So, so get in touch with your cycle, yes. learn what it is. Yes. And start, you know, kind of learning how to track and monitor your, your own unique fertility signs, you know, in your own unique body, because it's going to be different from everyone. And the insight you can gain um, you know, not just about your fertility, but just about your body and what is and is not normal for you. Um, it's immensely illuminating and immensely empowering. So I would definitely recommend the book, um, Taking Charge of Your Fertility by Tony Weschler for anyone um, who hasn't read it. It's a must read for all women to just kind of learn about women's health. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else can they do? So the other thing, you know, it's the, the next thing I would recommend is, you know, it's so easy on this journey. You know, there's so much that's out of our control or that can feel like it's out of our control. And ultimately, whether or not we get pregnant is out of our control. And it's, it's really overwhelming and it's really frustrating. 
I would, um, you know, encourage anyone to just really learn how to um, recognize the things that we can't control. There's actually so much that we can control on this journey. So in my case, you know, I was 42. I couldn't control the fact that I was 42. I couldn't change that. I couldn't, you know, go back in time and not be 42. You know, I was 42 and, and that was it. And yeah, I had really crappy test results and, and, you know, I couldn't change that either. But there's so many things that we can control on this journey, Jennifer. So things like how we eat, what we eat, what we put into our bodies, how we move our bodies, um, what time we go to bed every night, um, you know, how we handle our stress, how we, um, you know, interact with our loved ones and kind of manage our relationships. Um, you know, really basically how we show up in the world. And those are things that we can control the thousands, the hundreds of things that we can control each and every single day that can have an impact, not just on our fertility, but on our overall, you know, health and well-being and, and outlook on life. And those are things that we can, can control every single day um, that really help us, you know, be in charge of our own journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love all of that. And, you know, you, you're so right on this journey. We do feel like there is no control, but only because there is no control over the outcome, the when, the how, all of those different things. But, but we do have control over, over our body right here, you know, the things exactly. that we put in it and the environment that we're living in. So I think that, you know, it's really important for us to take charge of the things that we can and release the stuff that we just can't control. Exactly. Exactly. Sort of a great mantra to live by is, you know, control what you can and let go of the rest. I love that. Great quote. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else or do you want to dig into that a little bit more or do you have to have some other tips of things that they can do? You know, I had one more that I would love to share and this, um, you know, I, I, you know, this really, I can draw, really talk a lot about kind of my own journey and what this meant for me, because this was really the game changer, the biggest game changer for me. And that was to just really kind of tune into kind of how you're approaching your journey, just sort of from an emotional and spiritual perspective, um, you know, and really ask yourself, you know, do, do you, do you, asking yourself, do you, meaning you, you know, do you, do I believe that this is going to happen for me? Do I really truly in my heart believe that I'm going to be a mom? And I learned sort of while I was on this kind of imposed break from the fertility clinic, I learned that i didn't believe that it was going to happen for me. I was always thinking very positively and waxing very hopeful, but I was on this break, um, you know, this three month break from being, tr uh, from treatment. And I kind of just took stock in my journey and asked myself, you know, like, here I am, I'm doing all this stuff. I'm eating all the right foods. I'm doing yoga three times a week. Um, I'm healthy. I'm taking care of myself. I'm like charting my cycles. I know my cycles now. And, and, you know, I've had two miscarriages and a canceled cycle and like a bunch of negative pregnancy tests. Like what gives, like what, what else do I need to do? And, you know, I was a longstanding yoga practitioner. So I was very used to kind of sitting in silence and, you know, kind of listening for guidance from the universe. And, and that came in the form of, you know, asking myself, did I really believe that it would happen? And I, after a lot of soul searching, I learned that the answer was no. And I was giving myself a lot of negative messages like, you're too old, your eggs are crap, you don't have very many eggs left, of course you're going to be the one who has trouble, why do you think you can do this? Maybe you're just not meant to be a mom, which is like, so, you know, and we have these conversations with ourselves all day, every day, most of the time it's white noise and we're not even really tuned in to what we're telling ourselves. So I spent some time tuning in and that was what I discovered that I was telling myself. And I knew at that point that, you know, I could eat all the kale in the world and it's not gonna mean a hill of beans if I don't really truly believe in my heart that this is going to happen for me. And I knew that I had to turn that mindset belief that I had I had to turn that around if I had wanted to have any chance at all. And so at that point, I kept eating well, I kept sleeping well, I kept doing yoga, but I really spent a lot of time 
on shifting that mindset and that perspective that I had. And I'm, do you know, and when, once that happened, I conceived very quickly. And do you, do you feel that that mindset is also sometimes a bit of a self-protection mechanism for going into cycles? Oh, it probably won't work. And if this doesn't work, then we can do this. Like it, it's almost, you know, I have so many discussions with people about, oh, I just don't want to hope so much because it really hurts. And my attitude is, well, you know, it's going to hurt regardless of whether you hope or not. So going into it, thinking that it's not going to happen, but but it is a bit of a self-protection mechanism, isn't it? It absolutely, it absolutely is. And we do, of course, we want to protect ourselves and we want to keep ourselves from getting hurt. And it, we do, it is easy to feel like, you know, we're just kind of gluttons for punishment on this journey because we, we go through so much pain and heartbreak and just, you know, emotional hardship, right? And so we, we do want to protect ourselves from that. And that's a basic human tendency, I think. Um, but it's interesting that you say that, Jennifer, because when I went for my fourth IUI, which is the IUI where I conceived, where I successfully conceived, I um, started that cycle. When I got my period for that cycle, I knew that it was going to work. And it wasn't, and it was different. It was a different feeling than being hopeful or like, oh, I hope it works this time. I mean, I just knew, I had like an innate knowing that it was gonna be a successful cycle for me. Absolutely, I think that's really important. And I, and I do want to acknowledge as well, because a lot of the time on this journey, we're quick to blame ourselves because I'm the reason why it's not happening. And, and I do want to acknowledge the fact that, you know, if you're having negative thoughts, it's not always just the sole reason as well. So this is not giving you permission to blame yourself for Absolutely. thinking negative thoughts. And that's exactly why this is happening to you. But Absolutely. I think it is really important to acknowledge the thoughts in the background. And I had them as well. I, I remember reading and, and I didn't realize until like probably about six months ago. And I was reading a book by um, Jen Sincero um, called You're a Badass. And in it, she's talking about self-limiting beliefs and, and the things that are from your childhood that you've, you've come to know. And, and I came to the realization, of, I just, it made me cry because my belief around becoming a mom, which was built up from my childhood, was all around, you know, it's hard to be a mom and you have to sacrifice everything and all of these negative connotations around what it meant to be a mom. And I was terrified. And I and I carried that the whole way through my seven year fertility journey. And I do believe that that did have an impact on it. It wasn't the sole thing, but I do believe that it had, um, you know, like I had an effect on, on the whole journey and the outcome as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. So are there any other things that you want to impart on us in terms of improving your fertility or falling pregnant over the age of 35? Um, you know, I would just um, also say that, you know, being um, a woman of advanced age, now that I am a mom, it's really wonderful, actually, having waited. It's, um, you know, there's just, we have so much more, so much more wisdom and self-awareness than we have when we're younger, because we're, we've grown, we've evolved. Um, and and that to me in my experience has translated into so much more that i've been able to bring to my relationship with my son and being a mom um and i you know still um sometimes beat myself up for not starting when i was younger and wishing i'd started when i was younger but i just feel like you know i'm the person that i am now and you know regret can be such a palpable feeling and feeling like we did the wrong thing by not doing it when we were younger. And, you know, I just, all roads in our lives have led us to where we are now. And this is exactly where we're all meant to be kind of in, in a larger sense of the universe. Right. And, you know, if we'd taken different paths back then, um, you know, all we can say is that our life would be different. You know, we don't know if it would be better or what better would even look like or how to measure that. And this is, you know, you're, you're meant to be where you exactly where you are. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm so glad that you brought that up as well, because there is such a big stigma around, 
you know, I just don't want to be an old mum. Mm. There, there's this thing that, that it's something bad about it and then we're not, that you're not going to be able to have the energy to be able to run around and do things. Like, I just, you know, I'm, I'm 44 this year and, you know, and I have a, a five and a four-year-old and, and they keep me young, you know, and, exactly. I, and I look back, I'm exactly the same. I don't think I would have been able to handle it back when I was younger and I was doing all of these things. Like this really has, has grown me. And, and I think that I'm a better mom now because of the path that I have walked down as well. So I just, exactly. you know, yes, there is nothing wrong with being an older mom. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Stephanie, it has just been a complete pleasure talking to you. Can you please tell our audience how they can get their hands on a copy of your free ebook? Yeah, so I have a free ebook, 101 Ways to Boost Your Fertility, even when you're over 35 and have been told there is no chance. Um, so there's just kind of a whole smorgasbord of things in there. I want everyone to know you don't have to do all 101 things. I didn't do all of those things. Um, but you certainly when you leave through, you can find a few things that that resonate to you with you and speak to you that you could probably try and then maybe add a few more down the line um you can find that on my website um i'm gonna send you a link is that yeah. okay we can yeah, put that we'll in, put the, in the in the details in the below this video yeah so you can just click on that link and go and grab it there and i'm really excited to to give it to everyone awesome thank you so much for your generosity thank you for your time thank you for your wisdom now, if you love this video as well, make sure that you give it a little love as well. Make sure you share it, like it, and make sure you subscribe to this channel as well because this is just one of a whole heap of amazing interviews as part of the Infertility Unfiltered series. So thanks for watching.